Hey guys, it's time for another painting diary video and this is I believe week 17 I've obviously not done this in a while and that's not because I've given up on this I'm actually really disappointed that I didn't get any of these out but the problem is I didn't actually complete any projects over those period and I'm not even small ones like this one that you're looking at in front of you it's been a month of really focusing on one huge project that I'm doing which you might see in the next week or two in the diary video like this uh, and I had a couple of small little bits you know that I finished off but not enough to do a video for you know it was like one figure here one figure there sort of thing just to change it up a bit but anyway I do have some um, a bits to show you guys and um, I'll continue with the diary video. It's obviously not going to be a 52 week year diary as we're already halfway through the year and I'm only on week 17 but I'm going to continue with the numbering system anyway. Alright so let's get to what I painted. So what we're looking here at is a human team for Rumble Slam. So I got the two player starter box a while ago and I decided just out of the blue I thought you know what I want to paint them up. So I finished the human side first uh, I had some inspiration, I don't know if he, you know, he's got the, the jacket on, but I used to watch uh, WWE back in the 80s and 90s, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to make this team the Heart Foundation, you know, like with Brett the Hitman Heart and Owen Hart and the Anvil or whatever, so I decided to give them sort of the pink shorts, black trimmings and stuff like that with a heart on their certain spaces like he's got it on his belly he's got it on his chest he's got it just behind his vest there and you know just tie them together as a team as the heart foundation and i uh, quite like that these figures were actually really fun to paint nicely detailed um they came from tt combat um they do a game called rumble slam and I was pretty happy with it. So the next team I'm going to be working on is the Orcs, uh, which comes from the two-player starter set. And I'm going to do them, I think, well, maybe I'll keep it as a secret, but uh, I thought if I'm doing them as a heart foundation, uh, the other team I used to like was the British Bulldogs with Davy Boy Smith. And, you know, with Orcs always having a Cockney accent in every um, iteration of some sort of cartoon or something, I thought, nah. That's got to be the British Bulldogs. But anyway, I'm looking forward to finishing them. Because once they're done, then I can play some games. And uh, try out some Rumble Slam. I think it looks pretty fun. Kind of like a you know sports game, Blood Bowl-esque. Not that it has any similar mechanics to Blood Bowl or anything like that. But, you know, it fits in that sort of genre. Sports game with dice and stuff like that. Anyway, that was a team I did. I actually did this a while ago. Um... But that's the first thing for this week. So next up is some more undead halflings. Um, John and I did a battle report. And I can't think of... It must have been a few weeks ago. Uh, and I made up the undead halfling army. And then I found that I was, you know, just a few points short. So I had added in a few more figures. But they were unpainted figures. And it drove me and John nuts that there was unpainted figures. So of course... I had to get on them as soon as possible to get them done so that they were available for the next time I play. Uh, and these were those. So it's just a group of eight or seven spearmen. Um, there's one figure I haven't done yet, which is the Battle Standard Bearer. That would make up the eight. Because ah, well, we were playing Age of Fantasy, I think. Because you need units of 10 or 20. And I didn't have enough to bulk out, bulk out the squad because I painted them in 12s. So I just added the seven other spearmen that I had. Uh, I've got a standard bearer still to paint. And then this was the, the Banshee model I used in that game as well. And I just finished her off. Nothing special there, just, you know, I gave her a similar sort of ethereal look the way the wraiths and the horses, the ponies are painted. And the skeletons are fun little figures. They're also from TT Combat. Uh, they're my second halfling army, so I got the shield maidens, and now I've got the undead halflings. So I might have to work on a third halfling army, and then make a big campaign of halfling wars. But anyway, there's another eight undead to add to my halfling army, and what else have I got going? 
All right, so these are some hyenas. This is from the Conan board game from Monolith, is it? Yeah, Monolith Games. So, <laughs> ironically, I was looking through some of my stuff. I For my hybrid African army, uh, which I call the Shoshani, it's between a sort of mixture of my Zulus and my Namidians, uh, I wanted to add an African contingent. And, uh, you know, a couple of sort of wildlife style African uh, things. I already got from the Midians, I've got the war elephant, which obviously is the Numidian war elephant. And I've also got some gorillas. I've got one to handy I can show you, which were these 3D printed gorillas from Titan Forge. So, uh, just to give them that African feel. Although these look a little more Aztec y, I think it still works. So, I wanted some hyenas. Um, for the army but unfortunately the only hyenas that I found that are, that look really cool were from Mies Miniatures but they are quite expensive and I don't have a 3D printer so just going through some stuff I randomly came across these in the Conan board game they're all the same sculpt and one piece sort of hyenas so I thought hey they're the perfect scale um, so added them in Unfortunately, I needed six rather than five, but it's not the end of the world because uh, obviously in Dragon Rampant you have a unit strength of six, so you could always just make one of them two wounds as a leader model or something like that. It's not the end of the world. Maybe I'll find a, uh, another hyena model somewhere and just add it in as a six one, but for now I'm pretty happy. So they're based up like my the rest of my army and... I made them all in different colors. Normally a hyena pack is a very similar breed of colors, but because they're all the same model, I decided to go with just a little variant of shades of different tones just to break them up a bit, make sure that, you know, they're identifiable um, on their own. So if you, you know, oh, that one's this, that one, whatever. I don't know. It just, it made more sense to me just to break them up a bit so that they're not all monotoned and monoposed and monobased and just basically clones so anyway that's the first thing i've added to my shoshani i've got some more for this all right there's some more figures from the conan board game um i don't really know what they count as they're sort of um maybe just tribal african tribal warriors from the conan board game but I quite like them, and you know, I got the board game, got to pan up all the figures in the board game eventually anyway. So I thought, yeah, I'll bring them out. They can be a nice sort of, I don't know, a royal guard, a palace guard. So the guy in the middle there, he's the leader model I have that I use um, for my Shoshani. So he's my king, uh, Filiqueo, and it came with sort of a leader and five other guardsmen, obviously. All the guardsmen are monoposed as well, so they're all exactly the same model, which is a slight bugbear of mine, but not the end of the world. So again, I tried to vary up the tones of their skin color. An African skin color is quite tough to get right in the first place. To then have to shade different tines, tones of it, it's more subtle than you would think. I mean, on the camera, it probably doesn't pick it up at all, but... I tried to make it at least, you know, so like these two are slightly darker, this one slightly more purpley. Uh, these two, these two vary in different times of um, turns out tones of brown, yeah, just something like that. Um, I also just to make them stand out a bit more, I gave them a red head headband, as opposed to all the like the Zulu warriors and stuff like that, who I gave more of a beige, a yellowy brown headbands, um, and yeah. So, there you go. Uh, There's not much else to say. They're, they're decent enough figures. They weren't exactly brilliant. Uh, but it's kind of fits that ethos I like to do. Uh, like, I've got now the hyenas and these African warriors painted for the Conan board game. But also usable in my Shoshani uh, as palace guard and a fantasy element like lesser war beasts or, you know, sort of were dogs, if you like. Uh, as a fantasy element to that army so it works in both ways uh, i'm pretty happy with that and i got more miniatures painted for my various games Woohoo! i got one more thing 
So this is my witch doctor. So I kept the, the king out so you can see the scale of the model. Uh, she came in the same pack. She's obviously very heavily crouching down and um, sort of looking menacingly towards whatever. <laughs> um, so I had a thought about this. Um, I didn't want to just put her on a base and then on the floor. And then she looks like a toddler this high above them. And also um, in African um, sort of tribal culture, uh, the Shungormas or the witch doctors um, are very, very important members of their societies. Uh, and so I wanted to make her stand out. So I made this rock base, added all the bones and stuff to it. Uh, just to make it look like she's a fearsome leader and uh, is something to be reckoned with. And she's not that much bigger than the actual models themselves. Obviously, he's quite a big fella and he's standing on some rocks. So the other Zulu warriors and stuff come just slightly lower, which I'm happy with because it makes her stand out. And what's, what was interesting, I don't know if you can tell from this, obviously she, she came... Um, with um, a little puddle base, uh, a metal puddle base, and it was a it was going to be a nightmare to take the puddle base off. So I built the puddle base into the top of the rock, and then just covered it with some texture paint. So it looks like she's just standing on the rock. Yeah. So there you go. There's a Sangoma model. So, i.e., a wizard for my Sangoma, uh, for my Shoshani. So I've added. A few more elements that I've got the royal guard, I've got the hyenas, the wizard. So that army is starting to be fleshed out quite nicely. Um, I think overall, I think I'm pretty happy with the amount of fantasy elements I have added to that now. Uh, so I think I'm probably going to look at doing some, um, like just more of the basic elements for historical stuff, like more Zulus for the colonial wars and more Numidians for the ancient period. Um, because obviously they'll need fleshing out to make be proper armies to be used in other games, uh, but for the as a fantasy element goes, I think that's that's pretty decent enough now for that army. I mean, I can never say I will never add any more things because I always see things and go, "Ooh, this would be cool." I did also do a couple of other things. These were all for me that I just showed you now, but um, obviously I've been doing one massive project. And uh, I also did a couple of bits and pieces. I'll stick some photos up at the end of this video of some of the bits and pieces we added that's left already that I don't have to show you yet. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That's an, a longer video than normal than I normally put out for these diary videos. Is because like I've only had one of these things available for once. I could only show you maybe one figure a week or compile them into this big video, uh, which is almost like a monthly video, which I used to do. Isn't that funny? All right, so there you go. Uh, that's my end of my diary video for this week. So see you guys on the battlefield.